All right, everybody, get ready, because today we are diving headfirst into a Hollywood mystery that never seems to get old. Yeah. The death of Natalie Wood. And you know, you guys have given us some really interesting articles and stuff to dig into, so this is going to be good. We're going to lay it all out there, the timeline, the different stories, everything, and hopefully by the end of this deep dive, you'll have a new perspective on this case. I mean, Natalie Wood's life... It's like something straight out of a movie. Child star, miracle on 34th Street. Then, bam, she's in Rebel Without a Cause, yeah. racking up Oscar nominations before she's even 25. You can't make this stuff up. And, and, you know, behind all that Hollywood glitz and glamour, her personal life was, well, let's just say it was complicated. Two marriages to Robert Wagner, both ending in divorce rumors of affairs, a career that had its share of highs and lows. It's almost like a Hollywood cliche, you know? Totally. Okay, but we've got to talk about this dark water prophecy thing because that's just creepy. I mean, Natalie's mother takes her to see a fortune teller when she's a kid, and the fortune teller's all like, oh, yeah, she's going to be a big star, but watch out for the dark water. Right. Like, how do you not get freaked out by that, especially knowing what happens later? Seriously. But you're right. We don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole with that just yet. So let's set the stage. We're talking Thanksgiving weekend, 1981. Natalie's on a yacht. The Splendor, with Robert Wagner, they were married again at this point near Catalina Island. Right, and let's not forget the other two people on board that night, Christopher Walken, who was starring with Natalie in the movie Brainstorm at the time, and of course, Dennis Davern, the boat's captain. So we've got a glamorous Hollywood couple, a rising star, and a secluded setting sounds like the beginning of a really bad joke, right? Yeah. But seriously, they had dinner that night at a place called Doug's Harbor Reef. What do we know about that? Well, it wasn't exactly a romantic, candlelit Thanksgiving feast, that's for sure. Witnesses said the atmosphere was tense, lots of arguing, somebody even threw a glass. Not exactly the picture of a happy family holiday. Wow. So was it just a little holiday stress getting to them, or was there something more going on? Well, if you believe Dennis Davern, things got even worse once they were back on the Splendor. And this is where things take a really interesting turn because Davern's version of what happened that night contradicts the official story big time. Wait, hold on. So the initial thought was that Natalie's death was an accident. Exactly. The authorities concluded she drowned accidentally. Open and shut case. Until, that is, Dennis Davern, the captain, the guy who was actually there that night, comes forward years later with a completely different story. Okay, you've got to tell me what did Davern say happened. Buckle up, because it's a wild ride. Davern claims that there was this huge blowout fight between Robert Wagner and Christopher Walken. Jealousy, accusations of an affair, you name it, it was ugly. And Davern says he could hear the whole thing, shouting, screaming, coming from the deck where Wagner and Natalie were. Then, nothing. Silence. Okay, now this is giving me the chills. What happened next? So Davern, he goes to check on them, right? And that's when Wagner tells him Natalie's gone, vanished into thin air. Claims she probably took the dinghy out for a little late night spin. The dinghy in the middle of the night. But wasn't Natalie afraid of the water? Oh, yeah, she was terrified. Apparently, she even had this recurring nightmare about drowning. Okay, that's seriously creepy. So we've got Davern telling a story that totally blows the accidental drowning theory out of the water. Literally. But if Wagner was trying to hide something, why would Davern keep quiet for so long? Million dollar question, right? Davern says Wagner pressured him told him to keep his mouth shut, but who knows what really happened. What's interesting, though, is that some of what Davern says actually lines up with other evidence they found. Like what? Well, for starters, think about what Natalie was wearing when they found her body. A nightgown, a down jacket, and socks. Yeah, that's not exactly your typical boating outfit. Exactly. It's like she left in a hurry or wasn't planning on going anywhere at all. Makes you wonder. And then there's this woman, Marilyn Wayne, she was on a boat nearby that night, and she told police she heard a woman screaming for help around 11 p.m. She said it sounded like, somebody please help me, I'm drowning. Wait, 11 p.m.? But didn't Wagner say he didn't even realize Natalie was missing until much later, like closer to 3.30 in the morning? Bingo. That's a pretty big difference in timelines, wouldn't you say? Huge. And what about those bruises on Natalie's body? The ones that didn't really make sense if she just accidentally drowned. Ah, oh, yes, the bruises. That's another one of those details that just doesn't sit right. Look, I know the coroner initially said they were consistent with drowning, but still, it's hard to believe that Natalie, with her fear of the water, would just willingly go out on that dinghy alone in the dark. The bruises just make the whole thing even more suspicious, don't you think? Absolutely. So what happened? Did the police ever look into those bruises further? 
Well, they definitely raised some eyebrows. And you know what really got people talking? They ended up changing Natalie Wood's death certificate. They did. What did they change it to? Instead of just saying accidental drowning, it was amended to drowning and other undetermined factors. Other undetermined factors. What does that even mean? It's basically like they're saying we don't really know what happened, right? Pretty much. And, you know, with all this new information coming out, Davern's testimony, the timeline discrepancies, those bruises, the investigators started taking a closer look at Robert Ragner. I mean, it makes sense. He was right there on the boat with her. But what about Christopher Walken? Where does he fit into all of this? Yeah, Watkins always insisted that Natalie's death was just a terrible accident. You know, one of those things that could happen to anyone. He's always cooperated with the police, even drew this analogy about how we face the risk of accidents every day, no matter who we are. Right, right. Like you could slip in the bathtub or something. Exactly. Just like that. Yeah. But I guess the investigators weren't totally convinced, huh? Especially that Lieutenant Karina, the one who reopened the case, he seems pretty sure there's something more to the story. Oh, yeah, Karina. He said publicly that he thinks Wood's death was suspicious, that the evidence just doesn't add up to her ending up in the water on her own. Yeah, and he seems especially hung up on Wagner refusing to talk to the police. Well, that's got to raise some eyebrows, right? <laughs> if you've got nothing to hide. Exactly. It's like, come on. You'd think he would want to clear his name if he was innocent. So where does that leave us? I mean, this whole thing, it's like a tangled up mess of accusations, Timelines that don't match up, and then you've got Wagner clammed up, refusing to say anything. It's a real head-scratcher, that's for sure. Part of you wants a simple answer, a clear villain, but real life is way messier than that. So, what do you think? Accident, something more sinister, or something in between? I gotta say, after everything we've uncovered, it's hard to shake that feeling that something's not right. I mean, Wagner's silence speaks volumes, doesn't it? Yeah. If I was in his shoes and had nothing to hide, I'd be shouting it from the rooftops. That's a valid point, and it's something that's haunted a lot of folks following this case. But, you know, we also got to remember that everyone grieves differently. It's been decades, and Wagner has stood by his story, and it's important to note that his children with Natalie support his version of events. <laughs> right, that's true. And it's a sad reminder that no matter what happened that night, there are families whose lives were shattered. Exactly. It's easy to get caught up in the mystery, but at the heart of it is a real tragedy, a life cut short, and a family left grappling with unanswered questions. This case, it's like a giant puzzle, and we're still missing some pieces. We've got jealousy, alcohol, that creepy fear of water, and then the conflicting stories. It's a lot to unpack. No kidding. But that's what makes these deep dives so fascinating, right? We dig into the evidence, try to make sense of it all, and sometimes we have to accept that we may never have all the answers. Exactly. But by keeping these stories alive, by talking about them, by asking questions, maybe, just maybe, we can get a little closer to the truth. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. And who knows, maybe somewhere out there, someone holds the missing piece of this puzzle. Well, that's all the time we have for today's Deep Dive. But the conversation doesn't have to end here. Head over to our website or find us on social media to share your thoughts on the Natalie Wood case. Do you think it was a tragic accident or something more? Let's keep the conversation going. Until next time, keep exploring those mysteries, folks. And remember, sometimes the most compelling answers are the ones we have to uncover for ourselves.